guys. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I've thought of creating, um, showing you guys how to recreate this site now here, uh, but more simplified edition, you know. And I think it would be a great exercise to see how some things work. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is generate a site map component. Okay, and this is a brand new project, so I'm going to remove everything and write uh, up site nav here. And yeah, let's start the server. Oh, oh yeah, like that. Hmm. Save this. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is define our API and what we would like the site navigation to do. Um, so I would like for it to have uh, an opened uh, input so that we can have uh, the site map open by default. Uh, we have uh, three functions toggle so we can toggle the um, side the side nav uh, open a close method also I would like to be able to set if I want a backdrop or not so it has backdrop input and also like to be able to define the the top and bottom uh, so if you see here the side nav could extend up to the top or we can have it go down at the place we like and also for the bottom the, the same thing so like a top gap input and up oh, and a bottom gap input. So this is the methods, and the above are the inputs. I think it's easier to start with the styling first, and we will get back to this in a moment. Okay, so there's not a lot of styles. Um, so we are going to define them all together, except for one thing that we will see when the time comes. Okay, I think that's all for now. Right, so we can see that the site navigation is here and it's open. Uh, and I would like to have it closed for now. Basically, it will always be closed and open when we want it to. As you can see we can't see anything right now uh, let's change that so we're going to first implement 
our first input here. So I would like to have an opened true. So let's go in here. I uh, will make this a setter. Right, so what I did here is actually when you um, enter a value here, uh, instead of having like this opened, and have the value here, uh, you can make it more uh, explicit what to do when a new value comes in uh, and have a setter and a getter uh, for this kind of thing. So in order to do that, you need to have an extra uh, private variable here, which I set here. So basically when you write open, the value is being set to this variable. Uh, and with this, when this happens, I want to add a class to the host element named opened which is being set by the opened uh, variable. So when we write open here, actually refers to this get open here, which return, returns this op open. So if I set true to the open, this is true, then we should see the class opened on the, on the host element. Let's see if we did that. Root, upside nav, and there, there we have the class opened. Now, uh, what I want to do is add the class here. Uh, and basically, I want the transform to go to zero. So, what this does is actually when we have a class open, it pushes the side nav to come out. And there we go. Okay. Now, um, okay. What I want to work on next is the top gap and the bottom gap. Um, to better visualize this, let's uh, create a div here and say top nav. Um, maybe it's better. Okay, some background. Okay, as you can see, the side nav is uh, right on top of the top nav due to the position fixed and absolute positioning. But sometimes we would like, like here, to be a bit more uh, below the actual top nav. Um, to do that, we need to be able to dynamically um, set the top and bottom values of the side nav because they will come in as inputs. So for example, we're going to have here top gap equals to I know 100 and bottom gap the same. So in order to do that, we need to have a re two things. We have to have a reference to the element itself and being able to dynamically set the styles. To do that, we have access to uh, to the element ref which will give us a reference to the actual element and the renderer which will uh, apply the styles we want uh, right now we are 
using Renderer 2 and hopefully in the near future we have a third renderer that will actually be way faster called ID. Uh, for the moment let's work with what we have here. Okay, so we need two inputs. We need an input on that sets top uh, gap. We get a value with this value. We need to get a reference to the renderer and apply styles. The first property of uh, the renderer is the element itself. So this element, but the native element. Uh, next, we need the what style we want to change. We want to change bottom, uh, top, and the value. Uh, since the value will be dynamic, we can interpolate it like this. And we can do the same for um, bottom gap. Okay, and let's save this so the values are added. Okay, as you can see, we have 100 pixels on top and 100 pixels on the bottom. As you can see from the inspection here, this worked. Okay, uh, now that this is done, let's uh, remove the bottom gap. And let's set this to about 30. Okay, we have an error here. Oh. Okay, so next let's add our three methods here toggle, open, and close. These are pretty easy. Uh, and they're almost, oh, they follow the same pattern. Toggle is just setting the opposite value of the already set value. Close always sets the value to false. And open always sets the value to true. Now, um, these methods won't do anything from themselves. Uh, even if you change the value of opened, it doesn't really hide or show the content. Uh, to achieve that, we will define another method, a private one this time, which uh, basically actually toggles the stylings. We can achieve that by using the renderer. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, let's see if this works. We can access the methods when they're public by having a local variable here. And we can define and call the functions outside um, the component itself. So drawer toggle. And we can do the same for open and close. Let's not forget to call them. Okay, let's see if that works. Yep, so toggle works. Open if when it's open, won't do anything. Close will close it. Open will bring it back. But this doesn't work for the reason you expected it to. Actually, it works because we have uh, this class here opened. And, but we're going to remove this now and the reason is actually because um, we're going to remove also this because we want dynamic content here it's not always 200 the width and I want it to be dynamic depending on the content on the page so let's remove that and also 
splits here and actually we didn't even call this function so it was working with just adding the class opened as we have here when we should actually just have a call to toggle tour here uh, this one work all the same uh, it works now because we have a hard coded value as I said I want to make this dynamic so in order to do that we need to somehow get the width of the element dynamically to do that we are going to listen on the after view checked lifecycle hook I'm going to stick on here after view checked and we are going to get element width by getting a reference to the element and the offset width. Let's define private element width. And if we have this already, we shouldn't do anything. Again, so we turn here because this is not defined uh, the first time we access this um, the li this life cycle hook um, can take maybe six eight calls depending on when the data when the view is ready and it's checked um, but yeah and then we want to um, actually Renderer set style cell element. We want to change the transform to a value of equal to the element width. Okay, and we need to change the hard code value here to this element width. Okay, now the transform is uh, dynamic and it will apply transform when the component is ready. Remember when we removed the transform uh, rule here and the uh, opened, we would like this to stay so we need at least 200 pixels width but we don't want to translate to 200 pixels because if the corner is 201 pixel we will see some of the element here so that's the reason we are doing this dynamically and it should work the same close open toggle right okay now the last thing we need to do is add a backdrop so as we I wrote in the comment we want the has backdrop input so let's define it here has backdrop uh, uh, and by default it will be false uh, we will also need uh, show backdrop internal variable again a boolean and right so we need to actually add a div here which will have a class backdrop and when uh, this is only available if has backdrop is show backdrop is uh, true no no if ba has backdrop is given and when you click this it will actually toggle and 
due to the nature of how this works, we need to apply inline style here, display. Block if show backdrop or none if we are not showing the backdrop. And the last thing we need to do is get a reference to this element to apply some uh, dynamic styles. Uh, to do that, we need to use the uh, view child decorator here, which will we have access backdrop and we'll have local variable backdrop element be an element of. Okay, now with this, we have access to this element here by using the local variable we, we wrote here. And what I want to do is come here and write, uh, use the renderer to set some styles. Back to a native element. And I want to add uh, a width which will be equal to the window in a width okay and I want to also add a margin left which is equal to minus window in a width. Okay. Now, the reason for this is because the way this works, um, the battle will be relative to and will take only this the width of the site navigation but we want the backdrop to cover the page uh, that the site nav is not covering, so this area here. And to do that, we add a, a negative margin to bring in here, and we also add the width of the whole uh, area, of the whole window here. And when we open the site navigation, it will push the backdrop uh, to the left, and when we want to click on the backdrop, we want to close the side nav. There's a couple of things we still need to do. Here, when we toggle the drawer, we want to check if uh, there is a backdrop to set the show backdrop to the value of this open. Uh, be careful here not to write opened. The reason being uh, because the toggle drawer calls is called from the this that opened, so it will become an infinite loop. You will set the this open, it will call toggle drawer, it will go back to this open, and, will, and you understand that it will call the same method all the time. Okay, let's uh, test this out and see how it behaves. Okay, great, now it's open and we can see that a backdrop has been applied here. Yeah, then let's click it. Okay, great. Open, click, closes, toggle, click, closes. All right, and with this, we're almost done. Um, there's a slight refactor I want to make and actually create um, a private method here called, called set styles will take an element property and a value which will directly call the render set style and depending on which element we we provide we we'll call it and apply the property in the value um, I think this is a bit clearer than this uh, line of code here. 
So to change this, this set styles, pass the element, transform, and the value. Let's do the same for the rest. As you can see, it's a bit more readable, smaller. It's not a really great refactoring, but I think it's more readable. Right, I think we're all done. Uh, I think it's nice to leave this here, so we, you maybe can tuck it and see when the drawer is open, tuck it this class. Uh, in here we can actually do something. We can have a side nav content and have the content in here so you can actually put the buttons in here this will also work and your actual content of course great okay this is the end of the lesson I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions uh, please reply in the comments and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.